I have a serious question for you. Very important. Very important. Hold on one sec and I'll ask you the question, okay? Yay, welcome to the Make It So Show. I am your hostess with the most is Mojo Medium, aka Susan Morrow Johnson. You'll find me on the web at Mojo Medium. Where else? Or check out the link in the description of this video. It's so great to be here. I know that uh, I think I came back last week after my long trip and my long absence from here. And today I am excited again. I feel like I feel like uh, like this morning I was thinking about, oh, I've got to make it so show. This is the first one since the cruise, but it's not. I know I was here last week. And so I don't know. I guess I feel like today is a fresh start. And, you know, every day is a fresh start, of course. Oh, okay, here's that important question. Hi, Donna. Hi, Andrea. Good afternoon. So here's the important question that I have to ask you. As I was just preparing to do this show, which I call the Make It So Show, and I was saying uh, in the description of the video that this is your last chance for 75% off the Make Magic with Mojo program. All of a sudden, it occurred to me that maybe one or the other should have the same name as the other. Are you following me? So my question is, hi, hi. My question is, do you think that Make It So should be the name of this show and also the name of the Manifestation Training Course, Make It So? Or do you think this show and the course should be called Make Magic with Mojo. What's less confusing? What appeals to you more? What makes more sense to you? Okay? <laughs> so, yes, I'm wearing this groovy jacket that I got the other day. I got it from Cato on clearance. And um, I don't know if you know that some of the words I live by um, are shop affordable, look adorable. So over the weekend, I felt the need for a little retail therapy, and my dad was kind enough to chip in for this. So like I said, I got it on clearance. It was very inexpensive because I shop affordable, look adorable. And the earrings are perfect, and I've got shoes that are perfect too, but I don't know about you, if you're a lady or if you're a man. I used to wear high heels all the time with no problem. I, I don't have any problem wearing high heels. I've been wearing them forever. But over the last few years, I've worn them less and less. And I've gotten really into my flats and my lower heels, loafers, flip-flops, sandals, whatever. And uh, what happened today? I put on these five-inch heels for the first time in a couple of years and discovered that I don't know if I can remember how to walk in them without breaking something. <laughs> so here I am manifesting the ability to walk in five inch heels again. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about making it so for you. Let's talk about making it so. As I mentioned, the some weird noises going on in there. As I mentioned, I'm going to have to have hubby check that out. As I mentioned, uh, what did I mention? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness. Uh, so let's talk about manifestation. And let's talk about what that means for you. Ah, as I mentioned, this is 75% off the Make Magic with Mojo Pro program is coming to an end on Halloween. Okay, that's your last chance to get 75% off. And that is the course that has over 19 video training modules and a whole program laid out, including the blueprint and ebooks and uh, downloadables, a whole program laid out that will help you to create what you want in your life instead of settling for the same old dookie, like I always say. So the program is fantastic, and not only do you get the, the, the course, which you can study as many, watch it and study it as much as you want and implement it and enact it and enable it and do it. But you also get two sessions a month with me doing group coaching, Q&A, that sort of thing. Plus, I post things here and there. Plus, of course, you can always watch this show too, which I recommend 
for the members of that group the Make Magic with Mojo program. So again, whether we call it Make Magic with Mojo or we call it Make It So, <clears throat> it is yours for 75% off. And that is really actually a startling amount, I know. But a couple of weeks ago, my angels and guides, during my spray and pray time, which is in the shower in the morning, and I'm talking with my angels and guides and spirit and kind of getting started on my day, they said, you need to put this on sale. And I was like, really? They said, yeah, there are people out there who need this program and who need your help and um, they can't do it right now. So take, you know, cut the price a little bit. And I was like, okay, so like 20, 25% off? No, 75% off. Crazy. So it's under a hundred bucks, super doable. And um, you can even get a little quickie appointment with me to talk about whether you really want to do it or not. Okay, but if you click the link in the in the description or you go to Mojo Medium on the web, you will find the whole page that describes Make Magic with Mojo and what you get and how it works. Okay? Okay. This is the only manifestation process that actually works. And I am living proof. I just got back from a 10-day Caribbean cruise that I manifested for free. Honestly, the whole trip was paid for by travel points, not even mine, somebody else's. And I paid probably less than a hundred bucks out of pocket. Seriously. So this was, yeah, 10 day Caribbean cruise. And you know, earlier this year, I manifested a brand new car and I'm not rich. I am not rich yet. I am manifesting money as we speak. Uh, but that's, um, you know, stuff that I'm working on. And that's the thing. You can work on more than one thing at a time. You can manifest, you know, you can be in the midst of manifesting a lot of different things uh, whatever you want, whatever you are hoping to create in your life. What did I just do? There. Okay. So whatever you're looking for, if you want to live at the beach, which this looks like I do, I actually live really close to the coast. I'm, I mean, I'm walking distance from the water that is kind of part of Galveston Bay, um, 20 miles from Galveston. So, you know, I do kind of live at the beach and that's why I like why I like this. I really love the beach. If you love the beach and you want to go to the beach, you want to live at the beach, you can manifest that. You can create that. You can attract it into your life. And believe me, you are worthy of it. You know, I, I can't harp on this enough, this worthiness issue. Because down at the bottom of everything, years ago when I was when I was a younger guruette, uh, years ago, I realized that lack of receiving was behind every illness and injury. And that, and that's still mostly partly true. Um, okay. I'm getting a lot of little, dee -dee -dee -dee. um, so a lack of receiving, but, and admit it, you're terrible at it, right? You're terrible at receiving even a compliment. Hey, your hair looks great today. Do you say thank you or do you go, oh my God, I need to color it so bad. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Oh my gosh, you know, I need a haircut or whatever. How can you possibly say my hair looks good? Well, everybody goes away feeling like crap. You're not good at receiving and here's why. Beneath that, that lack of receiving is, is the, the, the basic reason for you not having what you want, for you not being happy, for your illness and injury, blah, blah, blah. Below that is a fear of not being worthy of everything love joy and abundance not you don't feel worthy of being loved you don't feel worthy of being happy you don't feel worthy of being wealthy you don't feel worthy of having what you want the way that you want it and you know and don't don't argue with me i mean that's not the point that's not the point you may think that you feel very worthy and if you feel very worthy that's great um if you don't have something that you want look at your worthiness there. Um, so it's a fear of not being worthy. It's not that you're not worthy. You are. You're born worthy, but there's a fear of not being worthy. And so that's why we don't get what we want. And, you know, society culturally does not help us out any when they tell us as children, hey, the world doesn't revolve around you. You're not the center of the universe. Money doesn't grow on trees. No, we can't afford it. No, you can't have that. I'll tell you a little secret, a dirty little secret. Now, my first husband who 
passed away years ago when our children were little. Um, he was a very good man. And don't get me wrong about this. He was a wonderful guy and we loved each other very much. But he was, he had a lot of fear around money. And I did too, and I still do. But he, he was more miserly about it. And he was kind of really, later as I found out more about his family and his parents and stuff, he was kind of copying what his father did. And so anytime I went shopping, to shop affordable, look adorable. I would come home and say, oh my gosh, I went shopping and guess what I got for the children or for myself or for you or whatever. He would never share that excitement over something that I'd gotten. I could have spent $30 on five pairs of shoes and he would not care about what I'd gotten. He had a very low sense of aesthetic, whereas I have a very high sense of aesthetic, meaning I like things to be pretty. Tim was colorblind, so, I mean, he was colorblind, so, you know, things were not even as pretty to him as they were to me, at least color-wise. Uh, patterns were a different story, but I had a very high sense of aesthetic, and he didn't. And so, when I came home from shopping, no matter what I'd gotten, no matter what, what a bargain it was, and when I get a bargain, I get a bargain. Like I said, this gorgeous jacket was on clearance for $22. Yeah, $22, which is actually usually more than I usually pay for anything. So, um, I, and I would be excited about the bargain as well as about what I, what I had gotten. Well, I would come home and say, oh my gosh, I went shopping. You won't believe what I got. And instead of sharing in that with me, he would say, how much did you spend? Well, that always made me feel that I was not worthy of spending whatever I had spent, whether it was $5 or $30 or $100 or $300. Whatever it was, I felt like he thought I wasn't worth that. Now, this was something we cleared up in marriage counseling. And, and like I said, he was a wonderful guy. He just had fear around money. And, you know, we are spending clashed. I'm not a spendthrift. But because he was so miserly about money and so afraid, we had a, a, you know, a difference there. It's a little difficult. And I'm sure you've had similar things in your marriage or relationships. We all have these money issues. And what does it come down to? Worthiness. A fear of a lack of worthiness. And I tell you what, I went shopping a few weeks after my husband died. And I, um, why is that flashing at me? Does it always do that? I hope everything's okay. So funny you were talking about the beach. I'm manifesting a summer condo on the beach. Woohoo, Sarah, go you. That's fantastic. All right, well, let me know when it comes to happen, when it comes to pass. So um, a few weeks after Tim died, I went out shopping and I bought a bunch of stuff and I spent about $300. I mean, I bought stuff for me and the kids, and whatever. And don't get me wrong, it's not like he left me a million dollars. He left me very little in life insurance. Um, but um, I had enough to go spend $300 on shopping for myself and my daughters. And I came home and I realized nobody's going to ask me how much I spent. And, you know, for some people that might be a sad moment to think, oh, my husband's not here to, you know, fall asleep in the chair or to ignore me or to ask me how much I spent. But for me, it was a moment of liberation. It was a moment when I really realized, hey, being on my own might have some benefits like getting to choose what I spend my money on and how much I spend. So there was that moment of, I guess you could say, actually, I manifested that. I manifested the freedom to spend what I wanted. It was not in a way that I would have asked for. Kind of like, um, I don't know if you were on the, uh, uh, on the Mojo show, on the main page, the Mojo Medium page. Uh, where I do the Mojo Show every week and I do angel card readings. Well, last week it came out with healthy weight loss, and I used this example. This was another thing about my husband dying. I wanted to lose weight, even though I'll bet at that time I was about 50 pounds lighter than I am now, and I thought I was fat, of course, and I wanted to lose weight. And the day of my husband's funeral, I got on the scale. I had lost four pounds in those three days. And I was like, I looked heavenward and said, I know I said I wanted to lose weight. This was not what I had in mind. 
<laughs> so when you do leave the how up to the universe, make sure that you're letting the universe know you want things to happen in a healthy way or in a happy way, okay? Um, I finally got to move back to my hometown, and it was in a very stressful way. I had always wanted to move back to my hometown, but since I didn't feel worthy of it, it finally manifested in a really difficult way where I kind of had to like run away from Austin and move in with a friend in my hometown. I mean, it was bad. Everything kind of fell apart. So number one, worthiness. You are worthy. You have to remember that. And number two, when you're working on manifestations and you're remembering to leave the how up to the universe, be sure you let the universe know that you want it to be in a happy, healthy way happy, healthy, safe. Okay. So like, if you're just saying, I want to have a lot of money. What if you get in a car wreck and you're left disabled and you get a huge settlement of money? Now you have a lot of money, but you're in a wheelchair, right? So that's where letting, keep letting the how happen by the universe. That's where that can kind of mess you up. So don't be afraid to manifest. Usually things are not like that. They're not so dire, right? Usually things manifest in a good, easy way. But just keep that in mind as you're meditating and creating affirmations, as you're journaling. Remember to think about, I want this to be in a happy way, in a healthy way, in a positive way. I want this to be better in a, in a good, easy way. I want to make money easily. I make money with ease. I attract money in surprisingly wonderful ways, okay? That's the kind of thing you need to keep in mind. Worthiness and keep it positive, right? Don't just say, I want X, Y, Z, because the universe will go, okay, path of least resistance, here you go, boom, car wreck, right? Um, how about I want to love my job more? Who you could get fired. Happened to me. I got laid off. I got kicked out of my job. And I knew it was a good thing. I knew it was a good thing. I hadn't really been consciously trying to manifest this. This was manifested for me. And this was a long time ago, 20 years ago. I got laid off from my job. And I really liked that job. But as soon as it happened, and I had predicted it, of course, um, I, and in my prediction, it was in a dream. And I, I, uh, I was real happy that I had gotten laid off. So when it happened, I knew it was a good thing. I didn't know how good it was going to be. And so I looked for a job and I looked for a job. And one day I woke up with the plan to start a new business. That was my first business. I started it in 1999, literally 20 years ago this year. And I started my first business and I did things a certain way and kicked it off and right out of the gate, had a contract, started making money like I'd never made before. And I paid myself a salary that was twice what I'd been making in the job I had been laid off from. And the first year, my, my business, which I paid part of to, um, to an employee because I needed help because I had so much work, my first business made a lot of money. Let's just say it made six figures. And I had never made more than 36000 a year, you know? And all of a sudden, here I am. Now, if I had not gotten kicked out of that job, that would not have happened. I would have stayed there forever. Even though I was stagnating and I was not, I didn't have any projects to work on, there was nothing really going on, and I was not going to get promoted. You know, it, was, it, it had become a dead-end job even though I loved it. But if the universe, my angels and guides, spirit, God, had not kicked me out of that job with the layoff, I would never have started that first business. Okay. So, even when the hard things come, when the hard ways of manifestation come along, trust that it's going to lead to stuff that you want. Okay? Okay. So, we've talked about worthiness. And we've talked about putting it out there in a happy, positive, healthy way, right? Right, okay. Thus ends today's sermon. I'm going to head on out and do some journaling because I'm working on some manifestations, and you should too. So until next time, I've come up with a, with a sign-off besides just mojo out. 
um, and, and it's funny that I came up with this and then I was looking through something, my journal or whatever, or my work journal, and I was trying to come up with a sign off for all my shows. And this was actually one of them and I had discounted as too corny, discounted it as too corny. And it is corny, but I'm going to say it anyway. You ready? I'm going to say it. This is it. Have a mojo day. <laughs>